Does the fact that Wayne Shorter called this tune ESP give us a clue on how to play it? Hi, I'm Ron Rodos, and this is my journey through the real book 112. Thanks for being here. And yeah, you know, a lot of times I think, you know, Wayne Shorter thinks a little outside the box. Matter of fact, there's no box there, right? And since most of us think in the box, I read all the time, you know, interviewers will talk about Wayne and they'd say, oh yeah, that's just a Wayneism, or he just speaks like that, you know? But hey, the guy's a genius, and we should listen to what he says. He also takes his title seriously in that they, they, they have an image he's trying to get to. And you know, he'll talk about that once in a while in some books of transcriptions. They'll sometimes talk about, you know, uh, quote him on the source of his titles. I don't think there's anything he said publicly about ESP, but and I'm a little tongue-in-cheek in what I'm saying here. But basically, um, ESP was one of the first, you know, tunes he wrote for Miles Davis when he joined the group. And basically, or maybe he wrote it before that and Miles, Miles recorded it. It's one of the first tunes they did on, on um, uh, their first album together. And so basically, he, he doesn't have really any 2-5-1 chord progressions here. There's a 2-5 near the end and, and in the first ending. Um, but um, but it's it, you can't really play your patterns, you know, your bebop, you know, two five one kind of things. And I think they're definitely getting away from that at the time. But so how do you improvise on something that does, you know, E altered to F major seven? You know, you, you have to rely on sort of turning off that um, that analytical part of our brain that says, okay, I know what I'm going to play here and this will work, you know? You could argue that you want to turn that off a little bit uh, in, in, in all improvised music, but basically, you know, so you know, what does it sound like? Okay, does it want to stay there or does it want to go up? What about chromatic? Explore that in a way that's not like directly logical from here to here to here to here to here. And that's definitely what they were doing with Miles Davis, you know. They, they even got lost a lot playing together, you know. Um, and and, and they, uh, uh, they, they enjoyed the process, even though they didn't really know what was happening at all times. So, um, uh, ESP, yes. Now here's the first, uh, I'll give you one, one insight that I, I figured out sort of over the years. What key is this in? You know, that's a good question. There's no overall key that relates to every measure, but it's basically in the key of F, if you really think about it. But it starts on a chord that's a half step below, dominant seventh. Then it moves to F. And in a way, it's like a substitute for the dominant. You can treat it like this. So for instance, let's say the first chord was C7, and then it went to F. You might play something like this. See, so it kind of comes from outside the key and then resolves to F there. You could do the same thing with the E7. See, so I'm not trying to establish E as necessarily the tonic. I spent like 10 years trying to play this thinking it was an E, but it's really not. It's an F starting with this approach chord. So that's uh, one way to sort of think about it. It's sort of starting from a little outside, a little left field here. And I think, I think that's the clue from uh, the title ESP. So here we go, and um, the mo fourth motif. Again, it's not really winding through the chords in our usual way, which is based on thirds. Chord tones, this is in fourths. So here we go, um, and I like um, sort of, uh, I think these chords are so lush, um, beautiful chords. Um, it's a shame to just always play it fast like this, so I'm going to start out of tempo and, uh, and enjoy these chord voicings, and then I'll get into tempo as we go along.
great, great, great tune. Um, I spent a long time just really analyzing these chords and seeing what works. Not necessarily thinking of a scale for everyone, but you know, you can identify scales, some chord voicings you like, and then it's a question of sort of loosening that a little bit, and even going up chromatically, like Wayne does a lot. You know, by instinct. And then, yeah, you can use these motifs. You heard some of the stuff I did developing them. But um, the main thing, and I had to think about this as I was playing it, is to really enjoy what I can play at this moment. Not always trying to play differently, or like Herbie, or Wayne, or whatever. Taking what I've learned already, and then embracing that at the moment. And that's how we can sound two, three times better, just like that. Embracing what you can do. It's, it's ironic, because we think to get better, we need to always be playing differently than we are. But that's absolutely the opposite of the uh, truth in that. So good luck with your playing. Let me know if you uh, need some uh, help with whatever stage you're at with jazz piano playing or if you're just getting started. Love to help you out any way I can. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, which is uh, another Wayne Shorter tune, Fall, that he recorded a little later on with Miles Davis. See you then.